Okay, welcome to iLecture Online. And uh, now we're going to talk about the ability for things to store heat. And of course, that can also be called heat capacity. Not to be confused with specific heat. But uh, let's write that down and we'll refer to it in just a moment. But let's look at our example now. Let's say we have two rocks. They're made out of exact same material. And we have a small rock, we have a big rock. And let's say that the big rock is 10 times the, as big as the small rock. And let's say that we add the same amount of heat to both rocks. And let's say we don't know the specific heat of the two rocks. In other words, we don't know how much heat we have to add to each, each material in order for the temperature to go by one centigrade degree. Let's say we don't know that, but since they're made of the same material, it's probably the same specific heat for both. And let's say we add the same amount of heat to both rocks, what will happen? Well, they both will have a temperature increase. That should be uh, straightforward. But since the big rock is 10 times as big as a small rock, I would say that the temperature increase for the big rock will only be one-tenth as much as it will be for the small rock. So let's say that we have a delta T uh, for the small rock than for the big rock. So let's say the del delta T is equal to, let's call it X then the delta T for the big rock will only be one-tenth X, will only be one-tenth as much because it is 10 times as much rock, 10 times as much material to hold heat. So we can definitely see that the bigger the rock, the more heat it can store uh, without a significant temperature increase. Now, uh, how much more heat would we have to add to, th to this rock for the temperature change to be the same? If you want the temperature change to be the same, if this rock is 10 times as big, you would have to add 10 times as much heat. So the heat capacity is, is really related to a few things. Uh, one is, of course, a specific heat because for different materials, you can have different uh, you can have the same size object, but one can hold more heat than the other, or one can go through a smaller temperature change than the other because it has a larger specific heat. So let's talk about that for a moment. So let's say that we have two materials. They're different. The masses of the two materials are the same, so M1 and M2. And let's say that M1 is equal to M2. So the first thing you would say is if you didn't know anything else and you add a certain amount of heat to both objects, you would expect the temperature of the two objects to go up by the exact same amount, but that's not necessarily true. That would be true if they were made of the exact same material. Same mass, same material, add the same amount of heat, yes, they would go up by the same amount in temperature. But let's say that the specific heat of the one here, let's say that C is equal to C1 and the specific heat of this material is equal to C2. And let's say that C2 is two times C1. I shouldn't write X because I might get confused with the variable X. So let's just say C2 equals two times C1. Okay, what does that mean? That the specific heat of this object is twice the specific heat of this object. Well, that means that it, you can add twice as much heat for the same temperature change. Uh, or, in order for it to change a certain amount of uh, uh, one degree centigrade, you would have to have twice as much heat to this one as you would have to eat, uh, add to this one. So, if you want the temperature change to be the same, and if this has a specific heat that's twice as big as this one, you would have to add twice as much heat for the same temperature change. So, it almost acts as if it's a bigger object. It can store more heat, so to speak, not because it's bigger, but because it has a, big, a bigger specific heat. This object can store more heat because it's bigger. It can, it can absorb more heat without as much of a temperature change. This one can absorb more heat because it has a larger specific heat. So both the mass and the specific heat uh, is important in determining the temperature change. So ultimately what that means then is that the amount of heat that can be stored in an object is proportional to the mass and it's proportional to the specific heat. And of course, if you know the mass and you know the specific heat, it will go to a certain amount of temperature change when, when you add a certain amount of heat. Now, if C is bigger, you need more heat for the same temperature change. If the mass is bigger, you need more heat for the same amount of temperature change. And that's how you really want to look at that equation. And one more thing, it turns out if you look at this and you use your imagination a little bit, I 
got that from one of my students. If you think of this symbol here, which is the delta symbol, which means change in the temperature, if you think of this as like an A, then you could say that Q equals O. And then what they do is um, they will reverse these two. They will write M first and C second. And they can say, well, Q equals M cat. Because some of the students that are in my classes, they want to be uh, professionals in the medical industry. They have to take the MCAT test, and so they usually remember how to memorize this equation by thinking of it as Q equals MCAT instead of Q equals MC delta T. I thought it was kind of cute. Anyway, so now you realize that the amount of heat that can be stored depends on the mass and the specific heat of the material. If either one of those bigger, you'll have a smaller temperature change when you add the same amount of heat. And that's how you look at heat capacity of an object.